Hi, this is Mrs. Wiederholt. Welcome to my lesson video on graphing and transforming radical functions. Now let's get started. Let's start out with graphing the parent radical function, which is y equals the square root of x. Now how I'm going to do this is I'm going to create a table, come up with an x value, and then find out what the y value will be, and those will be my ordered pairs that I graph. So, if x is 0, then that means the square root of 0 is 0. So there's my first ordered pair that I'll plot, 0, 0. Next, if I wanted to use 1, well, what's the square root of 1? 1. So there's my next ordered pair. x is 1, y is 1. And I'm going to graph that. Now, I want to pick my next perfect square. I could say, let's say x is 2. But 2 is not a perfect square, so if I take the square root of 2, I'll, I will not get a whole number, and it just makes it harder to graph. So I'm going to go up to 4. Now, the square root of 4 is 2, so that means my y would be 2. So I'm going to go to the right 4 and up 2. Now, I have enough points here that I can go ahead and graph this radical function. Now let's talk about the domain and range. As you can see, radical functions definitely have a starting point. And so when we want to look at the domain, we're going to look at that starting point and see how far to the right it goes. So if I look at my starting point, my starting point is 0, 0. So I'm going to look at the x value, which is 0, and so I know that my domain is going to go from 0 to positive infinity. Now when looking at the range, we're basically looking at the height of this function. So I need to look at my y coordinate and my y values. So the y coordinate of my starting point is 0, and this also goes from 0 to infinity. Now let's graph another one. Let's graph y equals 2 square root of x. So again, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start by making a table. So if x were 0, I will take the square root of 0, which is 0, and then multiply it times 2. 0 times 2 is 0, so that means my y value is 0. Now let's do another one. Let's say that x equals 1. Well, the square root of 1 is 1, and 1 times 2 is 2. So that means my y value would be 2. Now let's do one more. I'm going to say that x is 4. So I'm going to take the square root of 4, which is 2, but then multiply it times 2, and that would be 4. My y value would be 4. So now let's plot these points. I've got 0, 0. I have 1, 2. And I have 4, 4. So I have enough points that I can plot this graph. Now, what do you notice about the purple graph compared to the orange graph? Well, the purple graph is called vertical stretch. It's taller, and we call that a vertical stretch. And what caused that vertical stretch is this value right here, the number that's in front of the square root. Now, does this number, 2, in front of the square root of x, does it change my domain and range? And the answer to that is no. My domain will still be from 0 to infinity, and my range will also be from 0 to infinity. Now let's look at the third example. y equals the negative of the square root of x. So here we go again. I'm going to create my table of values. And so if x were 0, that means I would be taking the square root of 0, which is 0, and then I would take the negative of 0, which there is no negative of 0. So again, my starting point is going to be 0, 0. Now let's use 1 for x. So if x is 1, that means I'm going to take the square root of 1, which is 1, but then I have to take the negative of that. So that means my y value will be negative 1. Now let's try one more. Let's do 4. So if x is 4, I'm taking the square root of 4, which is 2, but now I have to take the negative of 2. So my y value would be negative 2. 
So now let's plot those points. Again, my starting point is 0, 0. This time, I go to the right one and down one. And then for the next ordered pair, I go to the right four and down two. Now I can draw my line. And what do you notice now about the green line compared to the orange and the blue one? It is reflected over the x-axis. Now this has no effect on our domain. Our domain is still from zero to positive infinity, okay? But it will have an effect on our range. This time, instead of starting at the starting point, which is zero, and going up to infinity, we actually have to start down at negative infinity, and it only goes up to the starting point, which is zero. So this is what your range would look like, from negative infinity to zero. Now let's look at a few more examples. Okay, let's look at number four. Y equals the square root of X plus four. So I'm gonna make my table of values. And we're gonna start, this time we're gonna start, what if X was negative four? Well, I'm gonna plug that in. If X was negative four, we would have negative four plus four, which is zero. And we would be taking the square root of zero, which is zero. Let's do another point. Let's try if x were negative 3. So if x is negative 3, we would have negative 3 plus 4 is 1, and the square root of 1 is 1. So now let's do another one. Let's say, let's go with 4. Um, excuse me, not 4, 0. Let's say, what if x is 0? Well, if x is 0, we have 0 plus 4 is 4, so the square root of 4 is 2. Now let's go ahead and plot those points. If x is negative 4, y is 0, so that's going to be our starting point. When x is negative 3, y is 1. And when x is 0, y is 2. So now we have points that we can plot our graph. And what do you notice about this graph compared to number 1, the parent function that we did? And when I look at it, I see that the starting point has moved to the left four units. And so when it comes time to write our domain, we have to show that in our domain. Our starting point is no longer zero for our domain. It is now negative four. And then it continues infinitely in the rightward direction. Now, did this leftward shift um, change our range at all? And the answer is no. And so our range is still from zero to positive infinity. Now if you notice, the beginning points of your domain and range will always be the starting point of your radical, of your square root function. Now let's look at number five. Y equals the square root of X plus four. Now do you see the difference in the way number four and number five is written? And number four, x plus 4 is all under the radical. But if you look at number 5, x is under the radical by itself, and you're adding 4 to that separately. So let's do our table of values. And I'm going to start out, I'm going to say, this time I'm going to go back to 0. If x is 0, then I would say the square root of 0 is 0, and then I have 0 plus 4 is 4. So when x is 0, y is 4. Okay, let's do 1. So if x is 1, I would have the square root of 1, which is 1, and then 1 plus 4 is 5. So my y value would be 5. And now I'm going to do one more. What if x is 4? Well, the square root of 4 is 2, and 2 plus 4 is 6. So that means y equals 6. So now let's plot those points. I have 0, 4. I have 1, 5, and then I have 4, 6. And I have enough that I can draw, and that's not a very good, I'm sorry, it's not a very good line, but there's my curve for this one. Now, let's think about this curve compared to the parent curve, okay? Um, this time, I don't see a shift going left or right, but this time the starting point 
is shifted four units up. So this time, the shift does not affect my domain. My domain will still be from zero to infinity. However, it will affect my range. So the y coordinate of my starting point is now four. So my range would be from four to infinity. Now let's do our last example on this page. I'm gonna put my table of values down here. So we're gonna start out and this time, I don't want to start out with a number that would cause a negative number inside the radical. So I'm going to start out by saying x is 3. So if x is 3, then under the radical I have 3 minus 3, which is 0. The square root of 0 is 0. And then 0 minus 5 is negative 5. So when x is 3, y is negative 5. Now let's try when x is 4. So when x is 4, under the radical, I have 4 minus 3 is 1. The square root of 1 is 1. And then I have 1 minus 5, which would be negative 4. Now I'm going to use one more value, and I'm going to say, what if x is 7? Well, if x is 7, that means 7 minus 3 is 4. So I take the square root of 4, which is 2, and 2 minus 5 is negative 3. So now I have enough points to plot. So I'm going to start out with 3, negative 5. And then my next one would be 4, negative 4. And then 7, negative 3. And now I'm going to try to draw that curve. And what do you notice here? Now, look what's happened to our starting point. Remember, the parent function starts at 0, 0. This one, the starting point is down here where x is positive 3 and y is negative 5. So if we look back, we see x is 3, y is negative 5. So you can look at these numbers right here and know where your starting point is going to be. So how does this affect our domain? Well, our domain now has a beginning point of 3, so we're going to say that it's from 3 to infinity. And sorry, that's a very bad bracket. Now, what about our range? Well, our range, the starting point, the y value of our starting point is negative 5, so our range will be from negative 5 to infinity. So now let's try to summarize for just a moment. If we look at the a value in our equation, in our radical equation, the a value has two purposes. It tells us if there's a vertical stretch or shrink. And let's see if I can write that. It's kind of hard to write on this board. Vertical stretch or vertical shrink. But it also tells us if the graph is going to be reflected over the x-axis. Okay, so it tells us those, uh, I guess you could say three things. Is it going to be a vertical stretch, a vertical shrink, and if it's negative, that tells us it's going to be reflected over the x-axis. Now, what does the h tell us? Well, the h tells us, it. first of all, it's the x-coordinate of our starting point. Okay. Um, also, it is, tells us is our graph being shifted to the left or to the right. So the x-coordinate of our starting point and shifts left and right. That's what it tells us. Okay, now, so what, um, what does the k-value tell us? Well, again, the k value tells us the y coordinate of our starting point. And then it also tells us about how it's going to shift. Does the graph shift up or down from the parent function? Okay. And so if we look at these questions to the right, which of the above variables controls the starting point of the domain? Hmm, 
Y'all tell me, what would that be? It would be the H value. And then what would be, which of the variables would be a starting point for the range? That would be the K value. Now remember, the H value is the one that I call the tricky one. If in your equation you see X minus the H value, that tells you H is positive. If you see X plus the H value, that means the H value is negative. Now the K value isn't tricky at all. If you see plus K, that means it's shifting up. And if you see minus K, it has shifted down. Now I hope this video has helped you understand a little bit more about graphing and transforming radical functions. And I look forward to working with you again. Bye-bye.